Warning, the following file is level 3 classified. Any attempt to access this file without level 3 authorization will be logged and will lead to immediate disciplinary action. Item number SCP-4128, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP-4128 is to be held in a humanoid containment cell. The cell should be modified to fit the following specifications. Walls should be constructed using modular concrete panels made from a special proprietary blend of concrete and additives for extreme strength. Each individual panel should measure 30 centimeters in width. Additionally, it is advised that these panels be lined with a polyether based polyethylene padding with physical elastic properties. A class 2 Titan vault door is to be installed in placement of standard cell entryway. Standard ventilation is to be installed with a separated gas supply system. In the event of a containment breach, the system will dispense a Class B sedative nerve agent. Transport teams of SCP-4128 should be equipped with an aerosolized anesthetic. SCP-4128 is currently held within Site-88 on Floor 18. An on-site psychiatrist should conduct a full psychological evaluation check every two weeks. Description SCP-4128 is a human male formerly known as Samson Sachs. The entity claims to be 108 years old, despite appearance being that of middle age. Saliva-based testing has confirmed genetic makeup to be of human origin. SCP-4128's most notable anomalous property is its incredible mark of strength and endurance. SCP-4128 is capable of lifting 3,500 kilograms with ease and shows great effort when lifting over 20,000 kilograms. Additionally, SCP-4128 can sprint at a top speed of approximately 85 kilometers per hour, as well as perform an 18-meter vertical leap. The epidermic cells of the entity are formed from a polymeric protein, giving it an innate ability to withstand extreme physical trauma. SCP-4128's bones are eight times denser than that of the average human. Note, this is most likely a cause of sclerosis. Discovery SCP-4128's existence was first discovered in 1975 through the Foundation's ASRP, Anomalous Signature Recognition Program, program marked the Foundation's first use of algorithms as a means of detecting anomalous phenomena and was vital in the discovery of SCP-4666. When correlating reports of a man performing impossible feats of strength came to light, the first confirmed instance by the Foundation occurred when witnesses reported a semi-truck accident in Beep, Belgium. A woman reportedly arched the front half of a car under a tractor trailer. While awaiting first responders, a man approached the vehicle and proceeded to pull it out by the frame. A cover story disguised the incident as an instance of historical strength. Following this event, a 48-year-old hunt for SCP-4128 ensued before recovery on Beep 2018 in Brooklyn, New York. This event is detailed in Recovery Incident Document 4128. A sample timeline of notable confirmed SCP-4128 activities designated as limited edition events are reported within Evidence Documentation 4128-LE-0138. Limited edition event 4. Detail. January 24th, 1978. Location. Gosler, Germany. Description. Police were surprised to find Francisca Beep. Note, Francisca had gone missing two years prior on her 16th birthday in a nearby town, sitting outside the local police station. Upon initial questioning, it was discovered that she had been held captive by Daniel Beep. Francisca claimed to have woken in the middle of the night, finding a strange man hovering over her. 
In her recollection of the escape, she remarked how she was changed to the wall of the basement and repeatedly stated how the man used no equipment but rather his hands to break her free. Response Class A amnestics were administered to all individuals involved. A falsified investigation was established as a catalyst for Francisca's rescue, with embedded foundation personnel acting as its correspondence to the report. Daniel Beep was later taken into custody. Confiscated evidence, none. Limited edition event 10, date August 31st, 1985, location East Los Angeles, California. Description. Authorities were alerted when a group of residents have successfully apprehended Richard Ramirez, a serial killer and rapist who went under the alias of the Night Stalker. Upon arrival at Holland Park Police Station, Ramirez began ranting about a man with impenetrable skin. The type of George Thomas, a field agent for the Foundation, was present during this display and immediately contacted Mobile Task Force Iota 10, Damn Feds. Upon questioning by the Agent Thomas, Romeris recalled being followed by a man in a red bond jacket before fleeing across the Santa Ann Highway. Upon an attempt to carjack a woman, Romeris noticed the man in close proximity and attempted to stop him with a kitchen knife obtained in an earlier raid. After a short chase, Romeris was rendered unconscious, where then he awoke, surrounded by other bystanders who had joined the man. Response: MTF Iota 10 retrieved a knife before forensics arrived at the scene. A false transcription of the interrogation was released to the public. Due to the high profile of Richard Romeris, a combination of Class G and Class C amnestics were used to ensure that any account of the incident would not leak to the press. Confiscated Evidence Stainless steel kitchen knife, bent, retrieved on Santa Ann Highway. Limited edition event 23. Date, March 5th, 1990. Location, Austin, Texas. Description, Foundation agents intercepted a call from a local reporter regarding the unexplainable placement of a Dodge Aries on the roof of an abandoned factory. Four men were found to be trapped inside the car, visibly distressed, three of them Men were armed with 9mm handguns, one with a Remington 870 shotgun. A correlation was established when reports regarding a drive-by shooting on a nearby block came to light. Response: A videotape of SCP-4128 was confiscated by Foundation personnel. The reporter, who was the sole witness to the LE event, was administered a Class B amnestics. After initial interrogation, the four men were apprehended by Foundation operatives and subsequently incarcerated into D-Class personnel. Confiscated Evidence Note, screen capture shows SCP-4128 in mid-jump. The entity has shown no flight capabilities. Limited Edition Event 30 Date, April 28th, 2000 Location, The Bronx, New York Description 46 Precinct Police of Bronx received a call regarding a street fight. When police arrived at the scene, a man was found lying on the pavement unconscious. Upon admittance into NYC Beep Hospital, X-rays revealed a complete fracturing of the ulnar shaft and a broken jaw. Witnesses identified the man as Jason Beep, a local resident of the apartment complex on Unionport Road who had been going around the complex with a gun to extort money from other residents. During one of these extortion raids, a witness reported seeing a man approach Jason, grabbing him by the arm. Jason proceeded to cry out in pain. The emergency call was made shortly after. Response, Class A amnestics were administered to convince Jason Beep of a prolonged engagement. Later court rulings found him guilty on the account of three separate charges. This use of excessive violence was recorded as a notable escalation in an LE event. Recovery of SCP-4128 from here on was deemed a vital level priority. Confiscated evidence, X-ray of the fractured ulnar shaft. Complete access to the full timeline must be approved by the current Site-88 Director, Dr. Philip Foster. Addendum 4128A1 
genetic markers indicate that myostatin-related hypertrophy, a mutation in the MSTN gene, affected individuals have up to twice the usual amount of muscle mass in their bodies, tend to have increased muscle strength, may be involved. However, this does not fully explain all reports regarding the entity's feats, such as its ability to leap across vast distances. If he were to have this condition, one would assume that SCP-4128 have immense muscular proportions previously unseen in humanoid anatomy. However, I can find no physical difference between the entity and any other athlete. If we're being completely honest, the guy has a bit of a pudge. Dr. Andrew Winstab Addendum 4128A2 In a recent checkup, it was discovered that SCP-4128 had gradually been losing hearing in its left ear due to excessive bone growth putting pressure on the cranial nerves. Request for a hearing aid is pending approval. SCP-4128 has reported suffering minor seizures in the past. Researchers are required to provide immediate notice to medical staff should another lapse occur. Addendum 4128B1 a series of interviews were conducted in order to uncover the origin of SCP-4128's anomalous properties and the motivation behind the entity's activities. The following were transcriptions of the video logs. Interview Log 4128-R03 Interviewed SCP-4128 Interviewer Dr. Robert Markstrom Forward Interview was approved after recent psychological consultation and evaluation deemed SCP-4128 mentally sound. The interview was conducted within an observable chamber. The entity was restrained by handcuffs which were chained to a metal plate in the ground. Two armed guards kept watch outside the room, equipped with four bow canisters of nitrous oxide. Begin log. Hello, 4128. How are we feeling today? I'm sorry. Could you say that one more time? How are you today? Are you feeling any better? Oh yes. I'm doing okay, I suppose. It was a little jarring having y'all knock me out with that damn gas. I'm... I'm not going to hurt anyone. Security measures have to be taken. It's nothing personal. I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions, do you understand? Yes, I do. Good, let's get started. When and where were you born? Beep, 1913. I lived on the outskirts of Glenville with my ma and pa, in Ohio that is. 4128, can you tell me why we have no records of you or your family present at that time? Well... Ma and Pa weren't exactly legal. They also never left the farm much. Interesting. How do you obtain your anomalous properties? Obtain? <laughs> I suppose whenever I was conceived, my parents realized fast. They find things broken that shouldn't be. Ma nearly had a heart attack when she saw me pick up the recliner. She was always so patient. She'd broken more than one finger during that time. Can you recall the first time you purposely used your abilities on a human being? I understand why this topic may be difficult to process. But the more we re-uncover, the higher chance we have of finding a way to suppress your abnormal condition. Answer the question, please. I was 19 at the time. Whenever we needed new supplies for home, my parents would send me into town. Figured I could take care of myself, believe it or not. Ma needed me to pick up fabrics at a haberdashery, a reputable place, ran by the gentleman and his family. He and one of his boys were working that night. SCP-4128 can be seen looking away from Dr. Moxstrom. I need you to keep going. What happened? Three men came in. One fellow stood perched by the door, 
We were suspicious like. I noticed one of them start stuffing some shirts into his coat. Everything tends to blur after that. I remember reaching for him when the Bruno pulled out a Roscoe. The bullet hit and I fell. When I got up, they were gone. The sun included. When I saw the old man lying on the floor, the shoplifter shot him too. No, they found out later it was a heart attack that took his life. I'm assuming you chased after those men. Of course, I was, well, it would be gracious to say I did it out of a sense of justice. Chased after them on foot, since the kid took past truck. It was the first time I started using my getaway sticks to their potential. Couldn't stop myself correctly, but hey, I still managed to catch them on the outskirts. I was so careless then. Could you please elaborate? I didn't even think what what. I picked the tin can up and threw it. The haberdasher's son just parked the truck and watched. Did you dispose of the witness? Did I? God, no. After seeing, I don't think I've ever thrown up that much. No. The rest of that night, we just talked. It was the most damned thing, I tell you. He asked questions, and I gave some answers. He asked me where I came from. Know what I told him? An alien planet. That colorful jelly bean nearly blew awake. You let him free, knowing he could identify you. Well, he promised he wouldn't tell anyone. Sort of repayment for avenging his father, I suppose. You know what I realized? That night was a damn warning. We'll wrap it up for today. 4128. Yes, Doc? Did you ever get his name? We'll need to run a background check, just for cautionary measures. Jerry was his name. Jerry Seiko. End log. Closing statement. After SCP-4128 was taken back to its cell, a background search was performed on Jerry Siegel. Findings led to his designation as POI-4128-A. Interview Log 4128-R04 Interviewed SCP-4128 Interviewer Dr. Robert Mockstrom Forward Upon discovery of POI-4128-A Deceased and the correlation between his works and SCP-4128. Another round of questioning was approved. Conditions of the previous interview were kept. Begin log. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and I'll need you to answer each with full, transparent honesty. Can you do that for me? Of course I can. Okay, good. To start off, can you fly? What? Uh, not that I'm aware of. You already know that I can leap pretty well. Noted. Do you possess any form of X-ray or heat vision? Oh, I see what it's all about. I suppose you all put it together, right? Some regular private dicks, I tell you. Excuse me? Oh, human detectives! <clears throat> well, considering we found several sequels works in your apartment, I must inquire about their validity. Uh, any of these stories true? Hate to disappoint, but no. Pretty much all of it is made up or exaggerated. Embellished to look pretty, you know. I figured as much. When did you realize that these graphic illustrations were about you? It was uh, several years after the first one. Figured it was a funny coincidence. Till I did my research. Found out that the writer was none other than that being. Did you confront him? No, truth is, I sort of engrossed myself into this fantasy. Could you elaborate? You know what I majored in, Doc? Accounting. That prison was only slightly better than his place. More importantly, it wasn't my place, you understand. The occupation didn't matter. The income didn't matter. None of it did, as long as I could do this. SCP-4128 can be seen flicking its wrist breaking the restraint, 
the two guards post to charge in. Back to your posts. He's not causing any harm. Apologies. Please continue. My God gave me these inflictions? I couldn't understand. Was it luck? Then these stories pop up. He convinced me that I was a part of something greater. Convinced me that I had a higher calling. The little grifter basically told me that I was a gift to the world. You're saying his works inspired you to take up these vigilante activities. To be honest, Doc, it was an overwhelmingly blissful choice. Scary at times. Finding your purpose always is. My first patrol ended with me getting hit by a truck. You believe that? But you can only see so much before. I witnessed terrible things, Doctor. Let's not get off topic. There are still things I'd like to discuss. I just wanted to bring hope, you know? I never meant to. Just lump them all together? The drug dealers? The murderers and rapists, you forget, you forget they're just people, and then you forget to control yourself. I'm supposed to be a hero, right? What kind of hero would do the things that I did? And Nog. Closing Statement Dr. Robert Markstrom requested continued psychological consultation for SCP-4128, along with the prescribed antidepressants. Both requests were approved. Recovery Incident Document 4128 Limited Edition Event 38 Date Beep 2018 Location Brooklyn, New York Description Foundation agents were alerted when SCP-4128 had reportedly turned itself in to local authorities. An investigation revealed that SCP-4128 had followed David Beep, a suspected cocaine trafficker, to his apartment with the intent to apprehend him. Upon breaking into the apartment, Karis Beep, David's 15-year-old son, proceeded to sneak up on the entity with a gun. SCP-4128 was reportedly startled and attacked the young man. An autopsy report showed that the chest wall was strongly crushed and the side wall of his right ventricle was sandwiched between the coastal cartilages and seventh thoracic vertebra before it ruptured. Surgery revealed a large amount of coagulated blood in the pericardium. Response Class A amnestics were administered to all individuals involved. Embedded Foundation agents implemented a cover investigation which framed David Beep as a murder suspect. David subsequently went to trial in the following month. SCP-4128 was recovered by MTF IOTA-10 without incident. Confiscated evidence. Transcript of initial interrogation. Confiscated from security camera feeds. Interrogated SCP-4128. Interrogator. Lieutenant Jeremy Beep. Forward. Upon SCP-4128 calling the authorities, dispatch transported the subject to Brooklyn's Beep Precinct. Lieutenant Jeremy Beep conducted the following interrogation. Begin log. Look, we found no weapons on you. Nothing at this crime scene either, except for the gun the kid had. As far as I can understand, no bullet wounds have been found either. So how the hell do you cave that kid's guts in? God damn it! What the hell do you do to that kid? I murdered him. What? Speak up for Christ's sake! I punched him. You punched him? Jesus! Do you know when to stop? Just once. Really? How the frick would one punch do that? I... I didn't watch myself. <laughs> Dear God, I just watched him hold his kid. I couldn't save him. I couldn't. <laughs> SCP-4128 strikes both fists in onto the table, dense with visible on the feed. I'm a hero. I, I can't save them. And no. 
closing statement. Lieutenant General Lee Beep was administered a Class A amnestic. The security footage was copied and the original expunged. After this, a raid on SCP-4128 local residential address was conducted. The following list details notable items taken from the previous residence of SCP-4128, along with items the subject had on itself at the time of recovery. Confiscated items. Copy of Action Comics No. 1. Copy of Action Comics No. 5. Copy of Action Comics No. 57. Copy of Action Comics number 254. Copy of Man of Steel, Issue 1. Flashlight. Red Cape. New and Ning Whitby brand. Blue Long Sleeve T-Shirt. 